Today I'm going to show you how to uh, recover this Netgear router. It's a WNR2000 uh, version 3 and uh, it's a great little router. Uh, I was using uh, DDWRT to upgrade it and uh, somehow I messed it up. But uh, nice thing about this router is that Netgear has built a boot uh, mode into it that will allow you to uh, TFTP um, which is trivial file transfer protocol uh, don't worry about that it, there's a way of recovering the router built into the router by itself you know from the factory regardless of your flash I thought it was I had bricked my router but I hadn't okay first thing you're gonna need to do is find a reset uh, hole on this router which is right there by the uh, Wi-Fi button uh, and you need a screwdriver or uh, paper clip if you have it or anything that, that will uh, poke down in there. You could probably even use a, a toothpick if you wanted to. Alright, so what you need to do is you need to, as you can hear, depress the reset button in there and then, then power on the unit while holding that down. And we're, I'm going to do this real time so you see how long this takes and as you can see I'm still holding that button down in the back. Okay, so now it's switched to green. Okay, so now I have a blinking green. Once you have a blinking green, make it count count ten times that it blinks, okay? So I'll start now. And once you see it blink 10 times, then you can take your reset tool out of the back. Now it's in the mode where it can accept a uh, TFTP uh, file transfer. Now, this works for a failed flash, uh, at least it did on my, my behalf. It may not on yours, it depends. Uh, again, this is specific uh, mostly to a Netgear router, especially this WNR2000 version 3. Okay, there's other versions. I don't know if they work the same way, but this is what worked for me. Now at this point, what you need to do is uh, plug in a network cable. This is a standard network cable we'll do straight through into one of the uh, LAN ports. Okay, so that's any of the orange ports in the back. The, not in the, uh, the yellow port, which is the WAN port. You want the LAN port, which is the uh, local area network ports, okay? And as you can see, we're still flashing there. That's good. It'll stay in that mode for a good long time. All right, next. Plug it into your laptop or into your uh, computer in its LAN port. And at which point you should see a flashing port. I plugged it into port three. So now we're connected to that port. Now the rest of this video I'm gonna do on uh, show you how to do it right on the laptop itself but uh, like I said make sure you've got the flashing green light at least 10 times uh, your ports connected and you've got your network cable into the LAN port on the back of that router and then into your laptop. Uh, you're gonna need a certain amount of files a certain uh, bunch of files and I'll show you how to get them and which files you're gonna need to fix this but if your router is not working, there is a strong possibility you're not on the internet to get these files. So I suggest uh, first off is plug your uh, laptop or computer directly into your modem by itself and you may be able to get an internet connection that way or uh, go to a friend's house and go get these files. Um, put them on a USB stick and bring them back to your house. Okay, so uh, I'm not covering that part. That's about all I need to do on that. Now. Um, we're going to go get, first program we need to get is a TFTP um, program called TFTP2.exe. So just put this into your search, TFTP2.exe. And we'll hit search here. Okay, so at this point, you'll get, you know, a whole bunch of uh, 
uh, links to choose the first one here let's go get that and as you can see I'm on uh, the Netgear site uh, that's the first link I had I'll put the link for this on the uh, description as well and here it is they're they're telling you to go get the TFTP client software so we're gonna do the same thing and scroll down looks like it's in alphabetical yeah there it is at the very bottom TFTP2 EXE so we'll click on that and then it says save so I'm gonna choose save as here so I can put it all in a, in a directory and let's go to my C drive and create a folder I just call it Netgear fix and open it up and save it okay so that's step one step two is you got to get a firmware file for your router that works uh, I suggest getting an older one um, or actually we'll just get the latest one for this router so let's go to Netgear back to Netgear here close this out and as you say you can see here it says download the latest firmware for your router so let's go there okay let's open up this router here so what we're gonna do is gonna go to support and drill down through that so support download center and I, I, I like using the drill down so I'm going to use the pro, product drill down routers modems and gateways that's what I have and it is a wireless router so we're going to go to choose that one and it is a WNR 2000 version 3 now this may work for other versions but I don't have other versions I only have that one so there's my WNR version 2000 version 3 and it gives you a whole bunch of uh, different files to choose from uh, the latest one will be up here and what NA and WW users means is North American and worldwide users uh, that firmware uh, covers both of them so let's go get that and that's the latest one blah 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 read these release notes click on download now and you get a window and you can put all this information in if you want to but you don't really need to you right here they give you a nice link that says continue without registering so we'll click on that and now it gives you the open to do yeah, sorry the option to open save as or save so i'm just choosing as save as again now notice that this is a zip file it's a compressed file so you have to uncompress it and i'll show you how to do that as well okay so at this point we have the two files we need to actually fix this so i'm going to click on open folder down here and we're in the Netgear Fix folder, and you'll see that we have the zip file here. Well, we got to unzip that file. So, um, in Windows, just double click it, and you can say uh, at this point, I just right click the. I, my way of doing this is right clicking the file and hitting copy. Okay. Then we're going to go back to the Netgear Fix folder. I like doing everything on the same folder, and then I'm going to right click again and choose paste. All right, so now you have a WNR 2000 version 3-v1.1.26 uh, uh, image file. And that's a file you're going to use to recover your router. Okay, so the next thing you need to, need to do is open up your TFTP program. And it says, publisher could not be verified. Sure you want to run the software? And I say, yes, I want to run it. And uh, now, by default, 
your server is going to be on 192.168.1.1. Okay, so prior to starting this process, let's make sure one thing. Okay, um, right click your, your networking icon down here if it's a, a wireless or wired, either way. Uh, we're going to go to the network and sharing center. Then we're going to go to change adapter settings. I'm going to turn off my wireless. Okay. So just right click it, choose disable. Now I'm no longer on the internet. Um, you probably aren't at this point anyway, unless you got two routers or you're hooked next to your modem directly. But regardless, um, next thing you need to do is set up your, your local area connection or your hardwired connection to the right setting. So let's go to properties on that. So right click it, properties. And then down here under internet protocol, all right? Double click that. And you have the option to obtain the IP address automatically or use the following. Well, really, you want to hard set your, your IP addresses, okay? Um, more than likely, your DHCP server on your little router is not going to be working at this point. So what you do is you put in 192.168.1.10 is what I'm using. Anything but one, okay? So... Uh, you can choose 10, you can choose 100, you can choose up to 254, I believe. Um, but I just choose 10, that's fine. And then your subnet mask is 255, 255, 255, uh, and then zero. Default gateway really doesn't matter. Uh, you can put one in there, and um, I'm going to just put it in 192.168.1.1. And the same is down here on the preferred DNS server, okay? Really, not all that important, but do it anyway. Um, basically it'll work uh, if you set it up this way every time so set your network card to these IP addresses okay then click OK and OK again all right then it goes through the process and says okay I'm connected here all right so at this point we're going to uh, flash that file onto that uh, routers first Let's just pick the file, and um, we're going to go to the nice C drive, and then Netgear Fix. There we go. And then we're going to choose that 1.1.26 one, uh, 1 .1 file image. Okay, so we'll open that up. Um, and at this point, you'll see that there's a password here. It's not necessary. Just leave it blank. Uh, and this here just leave this uh, on one time it should work the first time you use it so uh, as I said before make sure your router's uh, blinking green it's blinked 10 times and you set it up the way I showed you and then click on upgrade and if you see the progress bar going across it's working okay so firmware upgrade was uh, was upgraded successfully firmware was upgraded successfully you see that all right now you have to wait for your router to reboot. It takes a while for that to happen. So I'll, I'll, I'm doing this real time so you can understand how long it takes for that to happen. Right now the, the power light on my router is green and so is my uh, number on my port that I have the cable plugged into. Like I said, this requires this requires patience. Okay, my Power light's gone amber at this point, and my uh, port light uh, number is flashing. And as you can see down here, my network icon has, has just switched, and now it's uh, identifying the network again. And it says no network access, but it, it's found the actual router at this point. Uh, but my power light on that router is still amber, so it's still booting. It takes a while for that to happen. It's a solid amber, by the way. It blinks once in a while at this point. Like I said, it takes patience here. It's one of the things I think people are doing when they're trying to recover these uh, routers. They're not waiting long enough for the router to boot.
Okay, so now my power light is now green and my wireless icon is now blue. Okay, it's not hooked up to my router so the internet light is off. So at this point, I believe the router is ready to be looked at. And so let's go back to our web pages. Um, we can do it from anywhere. Open up a new browser window. And we're just going to go to the IP address. It's 192.168.1.1. Hit enter. Ask you for a username. The default password and username for this uh, router is admin. And the password is all lowercase, uh, P-A-S-S-W-R-D, so password, lowercase. And click OK. And there you go. Your router is now functional again. Um, as I said, mine is not connected to the Internet. But uh, as you can see, everything else on this router is currently functioning. Okay. So... Uh, next thing you need to do, uh, go back to your network, open your network and sharing status or center, sorry. Uh, change your adapter settings because if you don't do this, you're going to have an issue. Uh, enable your wireless card if you wish or uh, if you have it. And on this, oops, on your network connections, you've hard hardwired your um, router to those IP addresses I'm oh, sorry your uh, network card to the to a static IP address which is fine you know you can leave it like this if you wish or you can just uh, put it back to obtain a uh, address automatically and uh, use the following DNS addresses okay so I'm just gonna do that there we go just to show you that it'll work anyway so we hit OK OK All right, and now at this point, if we open up our network sharing center again, network and sharing center, go back to change adapter settings and look at that IP address, uh, sorry, at that uh, local area connection and go to status, you'll see that it's connected and that it has an IP address of 1.2. So it's changed the IP addresses, but regardless, it's valid. So close this up, close this up, and if we refresh, we see we're still connected to that router. So that's how you recover that Netgear uh, WNR 2000 version 3 um, using the uh, default TFTP mode on the router itself. Thanks for watching.